Hi everyone, you're very welcome to my channel. My name is Becky Setra. I'm a UK nurse and I do videos giving tips and advice to overseas nurses, carers or anyone who has relocated to the UK for work or you know anything anyway. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about the unique challenges of raising children in the UK. Did you know you can be jailed for smacking your child? So if you like to know more, why not watch the video to the very end? Hi, you're welcome back. So we're going to go straight into the video in a minute. Um, if this is the first time you've come across my video, you're very welcome. Please remember to like, subscribe and share if you've not yet subscribed and just press that notification bell as well. So anytime I post a new video, you would get notified. So I'm a mother of two. One is almost 22 years old. The other is almost 12 years old. One was born in Ghana. The other one was born in the UK. So the 20 one into 22 year old was born in Ghana and then the 11 almost 12 year old um, was born in the UK so I I think I'm well placed to talk about raising children in the UK and this topic is mostly I would say for parents who are foreigners who either you have brought your child from home or you give birth to your child here all of us some of the reasons we relocate yes is for you know different experience in the world and better opportunities and one of them is opportunities for our children um, I wouldn't lie um, if I say yes if you bring your children to the UK there are a lot of opportunities for them but it's up to you as a parent and up to the child to take your advice to heed whatever you have you are impacting in them um, to become who they would become. Not all the children, unfortunately, that we bring over from our back from back home to the UK become what we want them to be. Some become wayward, but majority, based on the child and the support from you, the parent, do well. So you need to keep pushing, you need to keep supporting your child you need to keep guiding them. Sometimes they can get into all sorts of friends, all sorts of trouble, so you must be very careful. Yes, these things can happen back home as well, but you know, anyway, so raising children wherever you are can be challenges. There are challenges everywhere. So one of them, when you bring your child over or you give birth to your child, as a foreigner, we're used to different educational system. So one of the issues or challenges would be um, navigating the education system, finding the right school for your child, finding a school which is closer to home. So you don't have to be traveling long distances to drop your child off at school. Um, another thing is as soon as your child starts school, you as a parent, you're part of that school community. You're expected to support your child with their learning, expected to help them with their homework. So I remember when my last one was in primary school, when their homework is given, you have to help them. So it's more or less like you, the parent, have got the homework as well. Um, so you have to keep an eye, you have to help in monitoring what they're doing, not too much into games. Um, apart from that, Apart from homework, there are issues around um, extracurricular activities. For example, they are having a sports day. It's important for you as a parent to be there to support your child because most of the parents here would go there and some you know, even sometimes they give the opportunity to parents to race against each other, running and things like that. And if your child is alone they feel you know oh my mom is not here my dad is not here and everybody else is or most people's parents are there so you have to make time to so it becomes difficult if you're working you're not getting time of work your child will feel left out another thing is about social events at school sometimes the kids are invited to birthday parties by their friends and you can't always say no 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 you have to 
you know make time and let them attend birthday parties with their friends so um back home as well if your child has a friend at school and they're having birthday parties and your child is invited definitely they'll be attending anyway and they do go to uh, things like trips which you have to support them with another thing which is a challenge is understanding the, the culture in the uk because we have different cultures we came from very different cultural settings and so the kids when they get here they start learning the culture they start learning from their friends oh this one's parents allowed them to do this and why can't i and the kids in this country uh, are also taught to learn more question things so your kid could be questioning you why why this why that and you'll be thinking shut up you don't question your parents <laughs> but oh well it helps them because i've realized sometimes um our children from back home because we feel that we are the parents they should do what we say yes that's right but you realize that over here things are a little bit different so if your children are asking you too many questions let them explore teach them show them explain to them as as well as trying to impact your own culture and um, as well as that financial so financially um, I would say schools here especially public schools you don't pay for your kids to go to school but you financially you have to contribute to their school trips which is not often um, feeding you have to make lunch for them or you have to pay for them to have lunch at school Childcare is another thing which I'm going to be talking about and meeting their needs. So they go to school, they see their friends, have got this, they've got that, they also want it. It's up to you as a parent to decide on what you get for your children, but you know, there are things like that. So childcare, what are the options um, for childcare in the UK? So one of them, or the most efficient one, is you do things yourself. Childcare is one of the things that affects a lot of us um it's very expensive if you're not doing it yourself so yourself means either you on your own or with your partner or your husband or your wife so most of us have had to do shifts around each other so one is off the other is at home so Maybe one is doing night shifts so that during the day they're available to pick and drop the children and the other is doing day shifts, so day or night, so you can work around each other and with the childcare, uh, which can be really difficult, especially for the one who has to do night, come back, drop a child off and come back and sleep and around 2 o'clock, 2.30, they are waking up to go and get the children at 3. So that can be very stressful and difficult for both parents. Another one is getting a child minder. So you need to find a registered child minder. I've done a video previously about um, child care or how to navigate child care system in the UK. So look out for that video. So it gives you a lot more information. So if you're looking for a child minder, look for a registered child minder who would help with your child care needs, but you have to be prepared to work, to pay. Another one is finding day nurseries if your kids are younger. Um, another one is employing a nanny, which can be very expensive or a living au pair or au pair they call them they can live with you and you pay them um, there are agencies that operate that au pair system which you can but they are very expensive as well you can look for preschool uh, care groups as well you can also rely or one of them actually before then is after school clubs or before school or breakfast clubs so if you're starting work very early some schools are open a bit earlier and they take the kids in they have breakfast clubs which you can pay and then when it's time they go into school and they have after school clubs as well so you can explore those ones not necessarily at the school or there are some people who operate after school or preschool um, or before school clubs so some of the before school ones can actually keep your children and then when it's time they go and drop their children off so you can look into that but all these child care systems are very um, expensive in the UK. 
the other one is relying on friends and family so for those of us who are foreigners in the uk we have no families here to help us so our friends have become like our family so we depend on our friends to support us whilst we also help them so you share responsibility with your friends as well so now um let's talk about some of the laws about raising children in the uk so i've got my point or my notes yes i'm going to be looking away whilst i talk to you so one of them uh, you'll be asking what so you want to know at what age can you leave your children at home on their own because you want to do it quick maybe back home you're able to leave them and tell the neighbor oh yes I'm, my kids are here i'm going i'll come back so you want to know why what age you can leave your children at home mm -hmm. so it is an offense so there is it, this is not well defined in the uk there is no particular age that they say oh you can leave your kids at home at age 10 11 or no there's no age however there is a however or a but it is an offense to leave a child on their own if it places them at risk so you need to use your own judgment on how matured your children are before you decide to leave them home um, before making this decision just make sure you know you you can judge how matured your kids are if something is happening how matured are they in reacting and looking for safety so this is very uh, important otherwise if you put them at risk you could end up in jail for that so children under 12 years old are not matured enough to be left alone for a long period so although it says there is no defined age that you can leave your children it says that children under 12 years old are not matured enough to be left on their own children under 16 should not be left alone overnight so if your children are under 16 years old you cannot leave them alone overnight the no 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 is babies toddlers or very young children should not be left alone so bear that in mind so child safety safeguarding of children is very high on the agenda in this country so anything you do make sure does not expose your children to harm or injury now parents are responsible for their children until the age of 18. once a young person reaches 16 years of age they can leave home and as a parent you can actually ask them to move out of the house um, but you still when they are 16 but you still have parental responsibility until they are the age of 18 years old um, another thing I was going to say is that so our children sometimes as soon as they are over when they are before 18 and they are in school we get all the school reports we have all the communication about their performance and everything from the school but by the time they get to university you are shut out the university does not communicate to you about your children's progress because because they are 18 they are adults and some of the children it gets to a point they are doing certain things and when you talk to them they'll tell you oh mom but i am this age and this is how it's done here and so that's what they want to do so bear these things in mind <laughs> so when the kids, whether they go to university and they are attending lectures or whatever, you will not know whether they are doing well or not in uni, you would never know. Unless, of course, things are bad, then the uni may or will communicate to you. But most often you are shut out. You don't know about their progress unless you keep asking them or they share with you because they are deemed as adults. Although you're paying, um, they're still deemed as adults. So they get their reports and everything. Another thing I found out is that as a parent in the UK, you do not have the legal right to smack your child. So smacking is pow, 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 your child. Ghana or back home, we say, if you don't know and you dare, I will beat you. Beating your child is quite an extreme word to use here because if you say beating, you can understand the connotation of beating 
so over here it's like smacking now you are actually allowed unless of course it is a reasonable punishment but how are you going to judge that it is a reasonable punishment because you are angry if you are not careful you would do something that would end up you know sometimes I get to this point and I feel like doing something but you just what watch and you shake your head and you know it can be frustrating you really want to do something to discipline them or as a form of punishment but because of the laws you have to be careful because it says that if the violence so that punishing your child or smacking your child in the law is more or less like it's a violence so it says if the violence is severe enough to leave a mark such as a scratch or a bruise you can be prosecuted for assault or actually domestic violence and the child can actually be taken into local um, into local authority care so you have to be very careful how you discipline your children in the UK yes as a parent you have every right to uh, discipline your child but it depends on which form of discipline you take if you take a physical discipline and your child gets hurt your child gets any mark your child gets bruising or anything and they go to school and they open their mouth and tell their teacher something you are gone you would end up in jail for assaulting your child or for domestic violence and also if you are a healthcare worker or whatever you do <laughs> you are in trouble so um, you just have to be careful on how you discipline your children smacking or even the word beating I would say beating is a bit extreme word to use so just be careful and finally another thing I have realized with our children is that so when they're growing in the UK so especially those who were born here different those we brought from home so when they're growing they get used to or they know what you cook Children back home or when I was growing, whatever food my mom and dad make, that is what I eat. But they are children in this country. Sometimes you cook something and they turn around and tell you, Mom, I don't like that. I want this. So it gets to a point you're cooking for the family and then you're cooking for a child who says, I want chicken and chips or I don't want banku. I don't want fufu and when you turn around and you tell them oh you know what when I was growing what my parents cook is what I eat so there are a lot of challenges but I think the main challenge for me is about the fact that looking after the children when you're at work who is there to look after your children whether you are a family if you're a family it can be a bit easy because you can work around each other as a couple but if you're single that can be very difficult but the option is you help your friends they help you how do you get those friends most often I would say if you're a Christian wherever you are try and go to church you will meet people from your background if you're a Muslim try and go to the mosque you see people from if you're a Hindu go to your temple you meet people from your your um, I would say your religion or your culture or your city or your country who may be willing to help you so I think that is how some of us have done it there were times in the beginning I depended on friends here and there to help they also do the same and then as a couple you share responsibility with each other so the challenges are there but that is why we have to find solution your situation might be different from mine mine might be different from yours but in the end it is finding a way around the situation always keep safe keep your children safe always keep guiding them the right way yes once again not all of them will turn out the way we want them to be but majority will do um, with your guide so I hope this video has been helpful. 
Remember to like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.